Hey guys, welcome back. Jeremy here with Slime Quest TV. Today is the third part of the Humminbird Helix G4N tutorial beginner's guide, whatever you want to call it. And today we're going to be diving in to the unit in the final stages. And we've changed this unit from angler mode to custom mode, which is going to give us a lot more options on our down imaging, side imaging, uh, and just all of our menu options put together. So let's dive right into it right now. All right, guys, in case you guys missed the last video, which I do recommend you guys going to see that part two of this three-part series on how to get this unit on uh, custom mode and a bunch of other stuff I went over. All you do is hit this menu button twice. Go up to your setup menu. You just go left or right on the keypad here to set up and then down to angler user mode. It's on angler. Hit the right cursor over and now we're on custom mode. You can see it popped up a ton more options right here. And it also popped up a brand new menu option, which is your different notifications. So I'm gonna go over, or actually the first thing I wanna do is why this custom mode is so important. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. And while you're in down imaging and side imaging, you're gonna get an extra feature that gives you a lot better clarity, which a lot of people don't know is the sharpness. Hit that menu button once. We now have an SI enhance, which we didn't have on angler mode. And I, you know, when I'm talking to people all the time and they're asking me how, how to get the clearest picture, I ask what their sharpness is on and they have no idea what I'm talking about. So I try to get everybody to get their unit on custom mode. And now we have sharpness and it has a low, medium and a high. I prefer it on low, but if in clear water situations, I have had that on medium and high and got some really good results. But this makes a big difference and and to get the clearest picture on your side imaging and down imaging, which I'll go over in a second. But I'm gonna turn this clear mo or sharpness on 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 a low. You can see all the hard bottom, the fish, the rocks, the things that you really want to see just got brighter. I'm gonna go back to to off you can see you can see some fish and stuff some rocks and stuff and you can see these little fish in the column this little bait but watch when i turn this on to low it just brighten all that up and when you're in dirty water you're not going to need this on medium or high but i'm going to go ahead and turn this on medium right here it brightens up that screen all those hard returns get that much brighter on high it gets super washed out unless you're in super clear water and there's not much plankton and stuff in the water column. I like it on low. That gives me a really good picture. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead, exit out of here to the down imaging and hit that menu button once for the quick menu. And again, you have your DI enhance, which we did not have on the angler mode. And it's the same thing. We have sharpness down here. We're gonna go down, turn that sharpness on low and it just gets a little better return on all those fish and bait and stuff like that. Um, and that's uh, that's really the main feature for putting your unit on custom mode. Now I'm gonna jump into these menu options and just go over all the added features in the menu, the ones that are really important. It adds a bunch, but a couple of them are really important, which I'm gonna go over. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead, get in a couple of these, uh, menu options that have increased now because of the custom mode and we're gonna go ahead and hit that menu button twice to get to the main menu setup. and the first one I want to talk about is this digital readouts a lot of people don't like these digital readouts over here in the corner so we can now get rid of those or change them uh, right now it's on an overlay which doesn't block out a whole lot but you could actually turn those off so you get actually a full screen of side imaging or down imaging, either one or, or 2D. Um, if we want to have boxes, we could have boxes with a lot more information over here on the left hand side. Uh, one main thing about the boxes that I like is the actual voltage. So you know what your voltage is on your battery. So you know if you're starting to die, you could actually turn the unit off, start your motor, whatever you gotta do. Another thing is, if you have your phone Bluetoothed to your unit, It'll actually show your battery percentage, 
phone calls, missed calls, things like that will pop up over here on the left-hand side as well. So that's just one added feature with the custom mode. Uh, another thing I want to talk about that I use a lot is the sonar. You can actually turn the sonar off by just hitting the arrow to the left here. And that's good for a couple things. If you're jigging in shallow water for finicky fish, the water's clear. The transducer, if you guys have noticed, does ping uh, and make these little these little beeps kind of underneath the water as it's pinging and, and getting the returns from the bottom. So I like to turn that off sometimes. You can actually do that now in custom mode. And your chirp configuration, which I'm gonna get into a little bit later in this video. Uh, but another thing is sounds, guys. If you guys are getting annoyed by all the beeping every time you go through here, you could have it on all sounds, alarms only, or no sound at all. So then when you go up and down the menu here, it's not beeping like crazy. I like to have mine on alarms only. So I'm going to actually show you some of these alarm settings now too, which we have a brand new uh, menu here, which I'm going to go on up here and over to the notification alarms. And we have depth alarms which I use all the time for when I'm in sh running shallow lakes. I don't know where I'm at. If I get in shallow water, I have it, I have it go off as an alarm. Um, low battery alarm, I like to have that set just in case I am running low on batteries. It sounds off an alarm, so I know when to start my motor so I'm not out there dead in the water having to control the motor or use my kicker motor back to the ramp or wherever. Um, you have a lot of different alarms here. Um, you'd have temp for your, your motor. Your outboard motor, temp alarms for the actual water, drift alarms, arrival alarms for when you're getting close to waypoints and things like that. Um, not a whole lot has changed in the actual sonar menu, but we're going to go over here to the actual um, HB chart. I use a lot of stuff that's added in the custom mode here, and one is overlay options. So when you're using Auto Chart Live, over your Lake Master card or just the base maps, you could actually have overlay options. So you could have your auto chart live information overlay in whatever transparency you want um, over your Lake Master maps, which I use all the time. That's one huge, huge uh, added feature of that custom mode. And uh, contour lines, you can turn your contour lines off. If you don't like all the different lines, you can just go based on color. Um, and makes the maps a little bit nicer. Depth colors. This comes stock on four. Depth colors. I like a lot of depth colors. I always have this all the way up on 10. That's one more feature that we get there. And then the last but not least is water level offset. And that's a huge thing on reservoirs. Any lake that increases and decreases in water level uh, throughout the year, you can change this right here. So if you go to the lake and your map from last year, you auto charted or your Lake Master maps off and it's five feet high, you could actually change this offset, do it up five feet, and it'll change all the depth across the board on your map. One cool feature right there. Um, yeah, again, not too much stuff in here, but the navigation menu does have a couple uh, things. Is you have casting rings now. If you like to see what kind of structure you're casting on, uh, when you're on the uh, full screen, nav you know, navigation screen, you can actually have casting rings so it shows if you're making 50 foot cast, it shows you a ring on 50 foot on what depth you may be uh, casting on if you like something like that. So that's pretty much, you know, there's a lot of options here. I'm not going to go over all of them because I don't use them all the time, but uh, it just adds a couple more things putting on that custom mode. But the main feature is, is that SI and DI enhance so you can get the sharpness and that just makes the, the display uh, just that much better. So... We're going to go ahead here, guys, and get on into the, the, the SI spectrum, uh, frequency spectrum. So let's do that right now. All right, guys, once we're in the actual main menu, the chirp configuration is in the setup item, and we're going to scroll all the way down to chirp configuration. We're going to arrow over to the right. This is going to have all our chirp configurations for 2D, down imaging, 360, uh, side imaging, and I'm not going to go over 2D or down imaging because it's, it's going to be the same concept as, except 2D um, already has all those options when you hit that check mark when you're in 2D. If you watch my earlier videos, 
with the full spectrum, the narrow and the wide cones. Um, so that's, I mean, that's really not much you can change on there. But the side imaging, I change all the time, especially using Mega when I'm in uh, a muddy bottom situation where I still want to use Mega, but it's not showing up good regular, regularly shooting from 1050 to 1175. On the older units, they shot at one frequency, one megahertz frequency, and which I believe was 1250, and now they shoot at a range. So they're, they're getting a wider range of, a, and it's how they get a better clarity picture. And you can actually take this, and it does not, it does not read on soft bottom very good, shooting at that, at that mega settings. The 800 kilohertz and the 455 shoot really well over that soft bottom. So one thing I like to do on my mega imaging is go down here and actually lower both these numbers to the lowest settings. I lower this to 1,000 and this one to about 1050 or 1100. And I'm gonna be shooting at a mega frequency which gets good clarity and I'm still able to pick up fish and stuff over a soft bottom like mud or silt, anything like that. I really don't mess around with it too much on the on the uh, 800 or 455 because they actually read pretty good. But you could actually up those up a little bit if you want to have a little bit higher than 455. Say between 455 and 800, you want to get a little bit higher. But we all bought these units for the mega imaging. Are you? And another thing is, if you're in really clear water and it's a really hard bottom, you could actually up these all the way up towards the top ends of them. So you can the starting frequency. We can bring this all the way up to 1250 and this end frequency at 1300 megahertz and we're actually going to get the, a better return than it's shooting now from 1050 to 1175. So that's one thing that the, you could actually do on these units now and with that custom mode is change these frequencies to get a better, you know, a better picture on your screen for side imaging and down, down imaging. It works both the same for both ends. All right, guys, I really hope this series helped. I know there might be a few things that I missed out on. And if I did, and there's something you want to know, comment down below, guys. I have no problem answering questions, making more videos on things that I forgot or missed in this video. It's hard to cover everything. I could be on this thing for days showing you guys everything about it. So I try to cover the basics, a lot of the advanced features, getting a switch from that custom mode or the angler mode to the custom mode, things like that, guys. So we got a bunch more videos coming out on how to get the best side imaging settings and stuff like that. So, you know, follow us along, guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Give us a subscribe if you guys feel like watching more of these videos in the future. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.